All right, so in this section, we're going to talk about loops. And loops are a construct that you will find in most other programming languages as well, except for some functional languages which rely only on recursion. But what loops allow us to do is to repeat a certain piece of our code. So let's say we want to print something a hundred times, then we don't have to actually write that statement a hundred times. We can just use a loop and repeat that statement as often as we want. Now the first kind of loop we're going to talk about is the for loop. And for the purposes of this section, I'm going to create a new package again and call this one loops. So now I'm going to create a new Kotlin file again inside my new package. So I can have another main method. I'm going to call this one loops as well. So now we can again create a new main function in here and we're all set to try out some loops. Now, as I said, loops in general allow us to repeat certain pieces of our code. And for loops in particular allow us to repeat that piece of code a specific number of times. So we should know in advance how many iterations we're going to have. And that's when we use for loops. We're going to talk about while loops later on, where you don't need to know how many iterations you will have in advance. But to use a for loop, you should know how many iterations you need, unless we just want to iterate over an array or list. So we'll look at both of these cases now. So first of all, let's say we want to print all numbers between 1 and 10. And we don't want to write print line 1, print line 2, print line 3, and so on. Now what we're going to do to achieve this is we're going to type the for keyword. And then in parentheses, we can write for i in 1 to 10. And again, open up the body with curly braces. And now we have our for loop ready to go. So what this is going to do is it's going to assign i to 1 first. Then it's going to do whatever we tell it to do inside this for loop. And implicitly at the end of each iteration, it's going to increment i by 1. So in the next loop iteration, i is going to be 2, then 3, then 4, and so on. So to make this clear, let's just print out i in this case. And now if you run this little program, this is indeed going to print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we only had to write one line where we actually print out something. Now, of course, we don't need to use i, so we could also just do the same thing in here all the time, all over, if we just want to do something 10 times for some reason. So let's say we want to know what the sum of all numbers from 1 to 100 is. Well, we can do that quite easily by just specifying our sum over here, and it's going to be 0 to start with. And in each iteration in here, we're going to set sum to itself plus i. And maybe you can see what I did wrong. So I made this a value, but I actually have to reassign this. And so we're going to make this a variable. So now in the first iteration of our loop, i is going to be 1. So it's going to add 1 to our sum. In the next loop, it's going to add 2, 3. And our sum variable will store all the intermediate results we're going to get until we're finished. So I said we wanted them from 1 to 100. So let's try and run this. And I forgot to print this out. So let's print line sum, run this again. And this gives us 5050, which is correct. Okay, so those kinds of cases where you know in advance I want so and so many iterations, that's where you use for loops. And as I told you, there's actually another case where we can use for loops over while loops. And that is if we have a list, let's say, or an array, and we want to do something with each of the elements. So I'm going to create a list of programming languages. Now let's say we want to print each of them. Well, we can do that very similar to what we've done above. So we can say, let's call this element in list. And then we can do whatever we want. So you can basically think of this range from 1 to 100 as an array as well. So this is just an array containing all the numbers going from 1 to 100 by 1 increments. So if we want to print them out, we can do that inside here. And we want to print each element, which we saved in this variable called element. So if we run this now, this is going to print each of them. So similar to what we've seen up here, the element variable that we use for our for loop is going to be assigned to the first element in the list and the second one and the third one and so on. And we only have to write our actual print statement once. 
Now there's one last thing I'd like to mention, and that is that we can call the withIndex function on lists and arrays. And if we want to loop over this, so this is going to give us the list together with each index. So it's going to give us not just the element, but the index with it. So we actually have two values to store in each iteration. And we can do that by inside these brackets, specify the index, then the value in list.withIndex. So what this is now going to do is it's going to assign the index and the value in each iteration. So it's going to give us the list element together with its index. So let's print each of them now so we can see what's going on. So we can say index element at index is value. And run this. So now it's going to give us element at zero is Java, element at one is Kotlin, and element at two is Python. So here as well, it's going to start counting at zero because it's really going to give you the index you would also have to use if you were to get the element using the square bracket notation. So you shouldn't be too surprised about that because we've talked about that when we learn about arrays and lists, but it's just something to keep in mind. All right, so that's already all about for loops. You're now good to go to test them out for yourself. And I'll see you in the next lecture where we're going to talk about while loops. Thanks so much for watching. If you've learned something new in this video, please make sure to give it a like. And also, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. If you want to watch more, check over here and I will see you in the next video.